Now, let's talk about the invasion. All right, we finally arrived at the invasion. We're going to talk about some details. Glutz News Network uh, presented this information earlier today. The Israeli War Cabinet just approved the invasion of southern Lebanon. So we're finally here. They're doing it. And then OSINT Defender, he's a Zionist, but you know he produces some good information. He says, the first images of the uh, Israeli howitzers. Look, I love how they try to name them as if it's theirs. The Israeli uh, Doher. <laughs> this is an American howitzer. Okay, stop trying to white label it like you're shipping, you know, from you're drop shipping from China. Like, oh, this buy my, you know, beauty beauty cream for your face. That's not yours, bro. It's Chinese made. You slap the label on it. So this is an American made howitzer, and the Israelis are trying to pretend it's theirs. But yeah, they're using them. Okay, they're firing them on uh, positions in the south, and they're invading. All right. Now I want to play this video for you, because I want to show you the area that Israel is going to focus on first, okay? This is just speculation, but this is um, based on historical uh, events back in 2006, etc. So this is an area, okay, called Matula, I believe, and it's an occupied Syria, occupied Lebanon, and it's right in between Lebanon and Syria, and this is where their troops are going to invade from first. This is historically what they've done. And this is apparently what they're doing again tonight. This is where the bulk of the troops are moving right now. I don't know how many. We don't know these details, but they're going to be revealed in the coming hours. And you can see how close it is to Syria and Jordan. Okay, this, uh, not Jordan, sorry, Syria mostly. This produces a, a very dangerous situation that potentially could include the Syrian army. Not intentionally, could be accidentally, but you never know. So... Jalisa DeGro posted, um, Israel securing military posts along Lebanon's border and positioning for an imminent ground invasion. Only artillery shelling is present at this time. The, the IOF declared the area of Motula, which is what we just zoomed into on Google Earth, Mas, uh, Mesh, Meshgab? I can't pronounce it. Uh, anyway, three other areas, as you see, circled. And they designated them closed military areas, and they are currently operating there. Okay, and then Hankel posted, I don't know if this is accurate, but Israel provided this information, uh, a photo of their invasion into Lebanon. I don't know if these troops actually entered or if this was on the Israeli occupied side, but you can see troops on the ground and they're obviously going to be moving with armored columns, tanks, armored personnel carriers, etc. Okay, now, um, how is Hezbollah responding to this? Well, as you would imagine, uh, the Islamic resistance in Lebanon says... Uh, this might not be uh, Hezbollah, but Islamic resistance in general in Lebanon. We are looking forward to the ground confrontation. Now, look, despite the fact that they're outmatched and overpowered, and they always have been and they always will be because this is a resistance indigenous force against a colonial state backed by a global superpower. So they will always be outmatched. OK, don't be don't listen to these delusional people. They are going to destroy the Israeli military. No, that's not going to happen, but they can defeat them in other ways. OK, despite that. They have been preparing for this moment for years. One, their men are willing and ready to die. And they have built, as I'll show you in a bit, very sophisticated, significant structures, much of it underground. And so despite their satellites and imagery, uh, intelligence, the Israelis are going to be entering an area that the resistance forces have been preparing for a long time. Mohammed Urchid referencing Jackson Hinkle. Yeah, bro. He uh, shares good information sometimes. So um, the point is the resistance is ready, okay? Now, I'm going to ignore this portion about Gaza for now. Let's. Uh, I want to show you this, okay, guys? This is a website that shows you the topography of Earth. Now, why am I talking about the topography of Earth? Because this is the kind of data that the satellites are collecting. But also, this gives you an idea of the difference in elevation of the geography of earth okay so the portions in light blue at the bottom and green on the right side you'll see this meter okay these are the areas of the earth closest to sea level the areas in red okay are going to be hills mountains very tall pieces of land okay and so if you look at the state of florida all right it's going to mostly be blue and light green because the state of Florida is like three feet above sea level, 10 feet above sea level at best, right? Very low, not very high. Okay. 
Now let's look at the Himalayas north of India in Tibet in China. It's red and even white because the tallest point on Earth is Mount Everest. Okay, so now that you have an idea of the different topography and the way to read the map, I want you to look at the Israeli troop movements, okay, in southern Lebanon. Let's take a look at the Matula area. So it gives you an idea of where they're invading and how they're invading. Okay, so not all of it is red like the north of Lebanon. Okay, the highest mountains in Lebanon are going to be the north, but in the bottom or in the south, you still have hills and mountain tops that are quite high. Okay, and this produces a challenge for the Israeli military because it's hard to drive a tank, you know, uh, on hills and mountains. It puts them in dangerous uh, positions, fragile positions, so they can get struck upon. It also gives Hezbollah places to hide, all right, in the woods, in the trees, in the hillsides, especially if they have tunnels and bunkers, which I'll show you in a bit. But let's take a look at Matula. Look at, look at the color. This is the lowest point, the area that they're operating from first. So a lot of their tanks and armored personnel carriers, they're going to invade like in, in the southern areas here in the green portions as well. But they start here first. Okay? They start here first. Because it's the area lowest uh, to the sea level, and that makes it easy for them to move their troops and their vehicles. Okay, now this is a screenshot from History Legends. This is a great YouTube channel. you got to watch his content. Okay? He will break down the military uh, details better than I ever could. I get a lot of my information from him. Now, this was back in 2006 when Israel had a gradual, uh, a, a moderate invasion, okay? And this is potentially what Israel is going to start with. But basically, 30,000 troops, and as you can see, they invaded here from Matula and this area here. And they also invaded from down here as well, but they started here first. So what they do is they invade, and then they take this area here so that they can box in, okay? They want to box in Hezbollah forces so they get trapped in the south and they try to then collapse in on them that strategy did not work back in 2006 but they're trying it again potentially now i want you to watch this clip like from his uh channel that will explain um these details i think is very helpful so let's watch this video together direction 11 by increasing ground forces to five divisions or 30,000 troops the second phase was meant to push to the litani just like in good old times. Instead, they pushed straight into enemy kill zones. On the 12th of August, a column of 24 Merkava tanks from the 401st Armored Brigade advanced west of Taiba. The moment they entered the Saluki River Valley, they got fired at from all sides. Hezbollah fighters used ATGMs like the Russian-made Cornet and destroyed 11 Merkava tanks within seconds. By the end of the ambush, 12 Israeli soldiers had fallen on the battlefield, including two company commanders. It's not a surprise that Operation Change of Direction 11 ended quickly and by the 14th of August it was Jijiwa played, as Israel and Hezbollah implemented a UN Security Council ceasefire. In these four days of intense fighting, the IDF lost 34 soldiers KIA, 447 wounded, 20 armored vehicles destroyed or damaged, and one helicopter was downed. By the time of the ceasefire, the IDF had captured more than a dozen urban areas, but overall only pushed 8 kilometers inside South Lebanon. Put simply, the Israeli military could not stomach more casualties. In 34 days of war, the IDF had sustained 119 combat fatalities, as well as 750 wounded. Anti-tank missiles were responsible for half of the losses, 25% from mines and various light weapons, 10% from rockets, 10% from friendly fire and 5% from accidents. Israel's ground forces lost 60 armored vehicles, including 22 tanks, of which 5 were complete write-offs. Meanwhile, the Israeli Air Force lost 5 aircraft, of which 4 from accidents. And the Navy lost the INS Hanit Corvette from a Chinese-made C-802 anti-ship missile. On the other side, Hezbollah lost an estimated 500 combatants K and around 3,000 others wounded. Considering the initial strength of Hezbollah standing at about 16,000 professional soldiers and reservists, we can estimate that Hezbollah lost 20% of its fighting strength within a month. But it's also important to admit that these losses could be easily replaced due to Hezbollah's heavy militarization of the Shia population of South Lebanon. They would even go on 
to save Bashar al-Assad during the Syrian civil war a couple years later, where, let's be honest, Hezbollah assault units played a crucial role. In the end, the 2006 war was inconclusive at best, since Israel's objectives were not met. Hezbollah not only strengthened its geopolitical situation in South Lebanon, but also drastically increased its prestige among the Lebanese people and all across the Middle East. As the historical examples of 1978 and 2006 show us, for Israel, a limited-scale offensive involving 25,000 to 30,000 troops will definitely not be enough to root out Hezbollah from the south. Of okay, so as you heard there from History Legends, he says, uh, based on everything you just saw, okay, that the Israeli troops failed. They sent 30,000 uh, 30, troops. They failed in 2006. They entered through kill zones. The terrain was very uh, helpful for Hezbollah. I want to show you this image here. This is like what a lot of the terrain is like in southern Lebanon. Okay, hills alongside bigger hills and mountains with valleys in between. Driving a tank, transporting artillery, howitzers, etc., that is very difficult in this area. So they have to try and find the low areas and then find ways to conquer the hills and then set up bases up there. This is not easy. Now, it's made easy by their technological advantage, which we'll get into later. Okay, it's made easier for them. But in this territory of hills and mountains, Hezbollah, look at all these fortified structures they have in the south. All of these are known positions. There are a lot of unknown positions. Bunkers, tunnels, bases, striking locations where rockets are fired, anti-tank gun missiles, etc. And all of these are connected by tunnels. So this is what Israel's trying to do. They're trying to drive over territory and beneath them are bunkers and tunnels. And this is taking place on hills and mountains and valleys. And so this is even with all their advantages, this is going to be very, very difficult. Now, I want you guys to understand this, okay? Despite the challenges that Israel will have to face, and they have faced in 2006, despite losing, despite you know going in with 30,000 troops, failing to meet their political objectives, they know this, and yet they're invading anyway. They're acting anyway. So what does that tell you? Either this time they're going to go harder with more men. This guy says at least 100,000 troops are needed to win. Or they're planning to go about the strategy in a different way. So the tactics might look the same, but the strategy will be different. Or maybe they're just dumb. Okay, Maybe Israel is just drunk on power and, and drunk on the delusional arrogance. I don't know. So the point is they know the risks they've suffered in the past and they're trying again. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing is don't underestimate the resistance, but don't underestimate Israel and don't overestimate them either. Any advantages are offset by disadvantages and vice versa. So does Hezbollah and the resistance, do they have OFEC satellites with sy synthetic aperture radar? No. Do they have F-35s? No. Do they have uh, F-15s? No. Do they have a superpower backing them? No. But do they have mountains and valleys to protect with tunnels and bunkers underneath and an indigenous population of young men that are religiously ideologically motivated to fight and die and win yes so they have some advantages they have many many disadvantages and the same is true for israel israel has disadvantages they have to try and root out bunkers and tunnels in a hornet's nest but those disadvantages are somewhat offset by the fact that they have F-35s and satellites and, and all these different things. So I don't know how this is going to play out, but I know it's going to be costly and deadly. And obviously Israel's casualties would be far lower, but Israel is casualty averse and they have political objectives that they need to meet. And they may not meet them. The last thing is um, Israel's facing technological superpowers. Sorry, the resistance is facing technological superpowers. You guys understand this, okay? So cut them some slack. When people are like, oh, the resistance barely did anything. Why don't they do more? Why don't they fire everything they have? And 
people are saying this unfortunately because of the propaganda which has to take place the pro resistance forces pro axis they're like hezbollah will destroy israel if they ever come into conflict they have so many rockets that could destroy israel that was all propaganda that was all hype that was all bullshit excuse my language i'm sorry it is they are strong in their own ways and they will produce disadvantages for israel but because of that hype people in response are like well then show us show us right they can't show you but cut them some slack because look what they're up against throughout this whole live stream throughout, throughout this whole video i've been showing you what they're up against okay so cut them some slack even if